Uh, hi guys, my name is Tom Antos and in this video I want to talk about uh, speakers or studio monitors. Uh, these are going to be speakers specifically designed for uh, music or sound production. Uh, if you're somebody like me and you're doing a lot of sound mixing for uh, film or video production. Now I'm not going to talk about the really sort of top of the line, high end, you know, the really expensive, uh, you know, uh, speakers. Uh, simply because I think most of us don't don't have really a use for that and can't really justify spending you know, those crazy amounts of money. I'm talking about these really affordable uh, and the $150 price range uh, speakers that I think uh, a lot of us who edit from home, whether you know, like I said, we're doing a little video production or some independent film project, uh, you know, and, and we need basically a, a good, reliable pair of uh, studio speakers uh, so we can properly hear you know the sound that we're mixing. Uh, I think that most of us, you know, can and uh, can find use for good speakers like that. These speakers will definitely not be good for just your average casual sort of music or uh, listening, or let's say if you're watching a movie, you want to maybe build a home home theater stereo. You're better off going with something, I guess, that has first of all has more channels than just left and right, like a 5.1 or 7.1, you know, uh, stereo system, but also something that has a powerful bass and all, all those other things. Uh, these speakers are designed specifically so that the person that's sitting in front of the computer can properly hear the sound that, that you know that they're mixing. So it doesn't exaggerate the, the really low kind of bassy sounds or, or some other frequencies. It really just kind of I would say uh, reproduces the real sound that you're working with, uh, which is very critical when you're doing uh, sound mixing. Uh, I know for myself when I'm working on films, you know, if I was using little like multimedia speakers or or like you know these home theater speakers, uh, a, lot, a lot of the times you get lost with those really big, deep, especially those bassy kind of sounds, uh, and you don't hear all the mistakes that you're you're doing there when you're mixing the sound. And then when you put it up on a big screen, let's say you have a premiere, you know, in a, in a big movie theater, uh, you know, during a film festival or something, and then you hear all those little sounds or sound mistakes that were left over there that were just you know there's no way you could hear them uh, uh, on those other uh, stereo systems. So the way that I usually work is I'll start mixing, you know, uh, on these professional studio speakers and then once I'm very close to having my final mix, then I'll actually go and I'll test out my movie uh, on different uh, TVs, you know, and, and built-in speakers on a TV or let's say home, different home theater uh, systems and see really then how my movie or the sound mix behaves on, on different uh, environments. And the same goes for the, for the image, you know, like once I do my color correction, I usually then go and test that on different TVs and things like that. Uh, to really see that I have these kind of neutral kind of colors that will work overall best on different uh, displays. And the same thing I think is a, is a best approach for uh, for when you're mixing sound. Uh, so these speakers are meant to be uh, set apart uh, basically in a perfect triangle along with the, with the operator, the person mixing it. So uh, you put one speaker in obviously on the left on the right side of your screen and you want to have those speakers pointing exactly at the, at the face of the person that's mixing. Uh, and also you want the distance between the two speakers to be the same as the distance between the, the ears of the, of, the, of the person mixing and, and the speakers themselves. So it kind of creates a perfect, you know, even triangle. Uh, and also you, another thing you want to make sure is that the speakers are at more or less the, 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 the same height as your ears. You do not want to have them higher or lower. That's how you'll know that these speakers kind of are going to really reproduce the best quality sound. Another thing to watch out for is, you know, making sure that in the room that you have, you know, you, you're mixing in and doesn't ha doesn't uh, echo the sounds a lot. And if it does, you have to for sure put other things in there, like these kind of, you know, foam and foams in the corner and things like that, so that the sound doesn't concentrate and bounce off from there. Because again, that will distort the the, the way the sounds uh, sounds. Uh, but like I said, for the basic setup, is you want to just make sure you have the speakers in a nice triangle along with you. Um, and and because of that, like I said, it will not sound good or that those speakers might not sound the best when you have somebody that's just sitting off to the side trying to listen. So like I said, this is, these are meant just for the, the person who's doing the actual sound mixing. Um, anyway, so I tested out four different pairs of speakers, uh, more or less the same price range and the same kind of size, more or less. So the first pair of speakers are uh, from Mackie, these are the CR4. Uh, model. Uh, these come with a 4 inch woofer and a 0 0.7 inch uh, tweeter. Uh, they have a frequency range of from 60 to 20,000 Hertz uh, and they output about 25 watts uh, uh, of power per speaker. Uh, on the front you have the auxiliary input and also the, the stereo headphone uh, jack. Uh, you also have the volume knob 
And on the back they have uh, balanced uh, and unbalanced you know, quarter inch uh, connections for the left and right and also unbalanced RCA uh, connections. Uh, one feature that I really like about these speakers is that they're narrowly designated to be, you know, one to be left or, or right speaker, uh, meaning that you we have a little switch here on the back, and you can, uh, just by moving that, you can switch which speaker is actually left and right. Uh, so you can swap out the channels, which comes in really handy. For example, your computer happens to be on the left side, and you want the, the powered speaker, the one with all the connections, to be uh, closer to that one, uh, and and or vice versa, if you want it to be on the right side of, of let's say, of your screen. Uh, then you can put it in either configuration and you don't have to drag a cable across. And this way you can easily switch the, the channels from left to right. Uh, these speakers also come with different cables. Uh, they allow you to connect the two speakers together. Also so you can connect it to power and so you can connect it to your computer uh, via the, the left and right, you know, balanced or for example the auxiliary cable. And next we have uh, speakers from M Audio. These are the AV40 uh, Active 2-Way Desktop Monitor speakers. Uh, these also have a 4-inch uh, woofer and a 1-inch uh, tweeter, so the tweeter is just a little bit larger. Uh, these have a frequency response range of 85 to 20,000 uh, hertz, and they output about 20 watts of power per speaker. Uh, on the front, they have the volume knob and then the auxiliary input and the headphone jack. Uh, on the back, they have you know standard connections for the uh, left and right speakers. They also have the stereo RCA inputs and uh, quarter inch uh, stereo you know, audio input jacks. Uh, these speakers also come with different cables. Uh, they allow you to connect the two speakers together, also so you can connect it to power, and so you can connect it to your computer uh, via the, the left and right you know, balanced, or for example, the auxiliary cable. And next are the speakers from PreSonus Ares. Uh, these are the E45 high definition two-way uh, near field monitors. Uh, these have a frequency response of 70 to 20,000 hertz, and they output uh, 25 watts uh, of power per speaker. Uh, on the front, they also have the volume uh, knob, and then they have the headphone jack and the auxiliary input. And in the back, they have the same connection for the two speakers together, and then also they have uh, inputs uh, for uh, unbalanced RCA, and also an input for uh, the two uh, balanced quarter-inch uh, foam jacks. And now these speakers allow you to some little bit of control here over the sound. Uh, so you can adjust the, the high, low cut, things like that. Uh, and they have these little, little knobs here in the back. And finally, the last pair is from Behringer. These are the MS40 uh, two-way uh, hybrid near field monitor speakers. Uh, what's great about these speakers is that, is that they're digital. They actually have a 24 bit and 192 uh, kilohertz uh, sound reproduction. Uh, the woofer in these is slightly larger than the other speakers. It's at uh, almost five inches, at 4.7 inches uh, large. And also the, the tweeter is two and a half inches large. Uh, they have a frequency range of 50 to 25,000. And they output uh, 20 watts uh, of power per speaker. Uh, on the front, they have a power button, then they have the headphone jack, and they also have uh, the different knobs for adjusting the bass, treble, and then the volume of the different inputs. Uh, and in the back, they have uh, uh, different uh, connections for the, the audio inputs. Uh, they have the stereo headphone jack uh, or the auxiliary. Then they have the, um, uh, the RCA uh, left and right. Uh, plus, they also have digital inputs for the optical and coaxial cables. Uh, now, out of all these speakers I uh, showed you guys, these actually are my favorite, uh, these are the, the Behringer's. Uh, they're, they're slightly larger and a little bit more expensive uh, than the other speakers. Uh, they're actually quite a bit heavier and, and larger just in size than the other ones. Uh, but the reason why I picked these ones as my favorites, and by the way, I had a chance to test out uh, all of these speakers over the course of two months. So I, while I was doing, you know, my different video productions and mixing and sounds and things like that, I would kind of swap out between the different speakers and just so, sort of, you know, so I could compare them. Uh, the reason why I like these is they just seem to pack the most sort of features uh, and uh, and also the sound. I mean, the sound I think is not a big difference. They all sound great. Uh, this one I think is a little bit clearer and the, the higher end sounds. And I mean, actually, when you look at the specs, uh, you see that this one actually has a bigger frequency range for, from all the speakers. Um, like I said, the only sort of downside of these is that they're they're so uh, big. Uh, what I like about these speakers is that right on the front here they have the the different controls for the audio, for the bass, treble, and different inputs. 
uh, and they have the headphone uh, jack and the power jack. So what's cool about this is that, you know, in case I just want to cut off the sound, uh, you know, or let's say uh, something goes wrong and just the sound is really loud, I can easily just hit the power uh, switch here, which not all the speakers have. Some of them have the power switch in the back. It also, having these uh, audio sort of control knobs in the front just makes a lot of sense. Usually you're going to be sitting and you're going to have to, like I said, the speakers pointing right at you. Uh, it doesn't make sense to put those controls in the back of the speakers like some of them had or you know like some of the speakers don't have any control whatsoever so here it's nice to be able to sort of like i said just quickly re reach in while working adjust the sound if i want to really sort of see how for example my mix sounds with a really strong bass or kind of a weaker bass so you you have the option to do that and then you know the headphone jack also makes sense that it's in front because again like i said if i want to switch from listening to speakers to my headphones just right there i can input uh, you know plug in my, my headphones right away now, uh, the really cool thing about the speakers is obviously the, the inputs that it has. So, uh, like I said, it has the, the digital inputs, uh, which, you know, if in case, for example, let's say you have a, a computer with one of the top of the line sort of uh, audio cards, which has, you know, really good quality digital outputs, that's what that's going to come in really handy. Uh, you're not going to have any sound distortion or signal loss or anything like that. Uh, but then also if you want you have the traditional sort of auxiliary and RCA kind of inputs in here So you have to kind of I would say the best of both worlds um, You know overall like I said all of these speakers that I showed you guys. I mean they all sound great I just think for me and just just for the for the money that you're spending I think the this comes in with uh, as the best value uh, and just the best sort of overall design You know like I said having those kind of key features here right in front of the you know on the speakers makes it a lot easier when working with it the only thing this doesn't come with, like the other speakers, is the set of cables so you can plug this into your computer. Uh, it does come with the power cable and also with this sort of RCA cable, which is actually the easiest way I found to connect the two speakers together. Um, so that's nice, but you will need to get a cable, uh, you know, like a, I'm just using basically a simple auxiliary cable from my computer to the speakers. Um, so that's one thing you will, you will need to get. Another thing you probably want to get is some kind of stands for these speakers. Uh, there's different ones. Uh, I, I'm kind of using these sort of generic sort of stands. Uh, you can you guys can see up here. Uh, they're not flimsy, but then at the same time they're not the, the most sturdy either. But they do the job. You know they hold these pretty large speakers uh, fairly well. Uh, like I said, over two months I was putting on different speakers on them, never had any problems. So uh, if you guys want to find out what stands I got, I, all, as well as if you want to find out all the links for all the different speakers I showed you here today, make sure you check out my website at tomatosfilms.com or check the links uh, in the description of this video. Also, if you guys like this video, make sure you click thumbs up, uh, add it to your favorites and share it with others. Uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for other uh, film equipment and audio uh, reviews, uh, as well as uh, filmmaking tutorials and, and other really cool stuff. Uh, thank you guys, my name is Tom Antos, and once again, for all the information about this or any other products that I've ever reviewed, make sure you go to my website at tomantosfilms.com.